I'm Angie Wallace. I think we know most of you all. And um, Wallace Pearson travels right across the street in case you are new to our um, operation. We've been here since 1970. Well, been in Nassau County since 1974. My husband and I started the business. We came from Pan Am background. And it's still family owned. Um, I'll start by just introducing um, my daughter, Angela Wallace. Oh, Wallace Pearson, Angela no. Wallace Pearson. <laughs> 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 My partner in crime. And um, we have Lynn Ann Mullins over here in the back. She's practically born to the manor as well. And Debbie Kellogg, who has been in trouble longer than I have, if you can believe that. Trouble. Um, Travel. 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 Travel together too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like to emphasize. And um, we have our two newbies, um, Julie Phillips over here and Christine <laughs> Saldana <laughs> have just recently joined. And Did you see Cindy over here sitting down? There's Cindy. There she is. <laughs> sitting on the front row. Cindy um, is just back from three weeks in Europe and um, has a wealth of information about how to get around over there right now. <laughs> um, the whole staff, much like, and we consider you all our early adapters, we're so proud of you for getting together and getting out there because right now it's a great time to travel. The crowds are down in most areas. They're starting to fill in quickly though. And if you've noticed in trying to book 20, to 23 and now we're even starting to move into 24 <coughs> my recommendation is keep looking at what you want best and get a hold on it because the Aussies haven't started traveling yet the Chinese aren't back on the road yet the South Americans are barely moving the Canadians are just getting started so right now you've got a, a pretty open field but it's going to close in quick once everybody gets their feet under them again so um yeah, that the staff is doing, um, Debbie and Lynn Ann are going to Antarctica this year. Gracie's not here right now, and Don, they're on the Scarlet Lady. Have you heard of the Scarlet Lady? That's Richard Branson's ship that's been sitting in the water waiting for the stuff to go away. And it's brand, brand new, a new concept, and we're really excited to hear what they have to say. I think it's a little avant-garde, kind of like going into outer space. <laughs> but <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what they have to say when they get back. So anyway, everybody's traveling, traveling. And like you, we're finding little challenges along the way. And as we learn how to manipulate all that, we're smoothing the way for everybody else. So um, we're, we're just really all so happy as you are um, just to be able to get out and move around again. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Jennifer Collins Thorinson. <laughs> but Jennifer oh. is tout for us, and so she's going to do the rest of this. Thank you, Angie. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, it's such a pleasure for me to be here, to be with my friends from Wallace Pearson Travel. For those of you that haven't been working with them for decades like I have, they are the very best. They are true professionals, and so experienced. I mean, they have that difficult job of going out like Cindy just did and, you know, experiencing those products so they can teach you about them and know all the details. And really, they are going to make sure that your trip is as perfect as it can be. But not only that, they're going to be able to advise you of, of what they recommend for you. And um, they are the best. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> so after, after I don't know, 19, 20 months of not being able to see them in person, I'm just so happy to be here to see all of you too. So thank you. Um, how many of you have been on a tow trip? Okay, maybe I should ask who hasn't been on a tow trip. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, I know, I think the Shrek have been on quite a few, and the Carols, are, are they here? Yeah. Okay, but some have been on, you know, so many trips. Oh, you guys have been on a lot of trips. Who 
like to do a presentation? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask. Okay, how many? Is there anybody here that's been on more than five trips? So, well, I saw hands. Wow. How many? Do you know? Six. 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 Awesome. Did you have a favorite? Uh, Ooh. Germany. Germany. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. Romantic Germany. And and how many trips? You had six. And how, did you have a favorite? Sasha Italy. Oh. I was going to say that. What did you like about that? Everything. <laughs> that's right. a, the food was great. Uh, it was just a great program. And the after hours program that we had in the Vatican, unbelievable. Our group was the only group in the system chapel for 45 minutes. That's awesome. We got to take pictures. Well, you can beat that up a little bit. I'm going to put it in my presentation. You guys, yes, I recognize you too. Yeah, thank you. We, loved, uh, we got back from Australia New Zealand on March 20th, uh, <laughs> March 18th, 2020. So we were the last group to complete our trip. That was a great trip. We also, well, I love classic Italy. We like Scandinavian stuff. That was oh, a great trip. That's in Norway, Sweden. Yeah. Now, know, to do Denmark. that, to do that trip on your own, it would be challenging because there's so many logistics mm -hmm. to see the places that you saw. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, who else has traveled with us a few times? We've done at least seven. Awesome. Thank wow. you. The first Is there one classic yeah. Italy was the best with Giorgio? With Giorgio. With <laughs> Dabi. <laughs> So is there anything special that you like about Talc or? They do these extra little special things that aren't even on the list that just make the day. We call those a lame nap, a little something extra, but we don't tell you about them. So for those of you that haven't traveled with us, either I'm really confident in what we do or how could I get up in front of a crowd of people that I don't really know and ask, how was your trip? But uh, you know what, we, we always want to take care of our guests and I'll show you, tonight I'm going to show you some of our mostly river cruise and small ship itineraries. Um, Angie and Ange, uh, Angela asked me to focus on some of the things that we, where we have a lot of space or some space for next year because if you can imagine we had so many, we canceled so many things in the past year and a half that um, people are booked like crazy and we don't have a lot of space and to focus on water a little bit and then I'll talk about some of our land programs but we cover each of the seven continents and have um, lots of different itineraries <laughs> well, uh, so when you travel with us this is how you're going to travel and what you decide <laughs> for those of you that have been to a town presentation before or have been on a town trip you've seen this picture many times I'm sure uh, we've been in business since 1925. We're a family-run company, and uh, Arthur Tauk, the chairman of the board, is 90 and still, you know, right there reading comment cards because he wants to make sure that we're still doing things right. With them, it's never been about the bottom line. It's always about providing the, the best experience and quality and value. And as far as the experience goes, we are always looking to share the destination in the best way that we can. So our product managers, the people that are have that really difficult job of uh, testing hotels and developing itineraries and trying all the meals and all those things, they know at the end of the day that they're spending your money. And if we don't do it wisely, you're not going to come back to us. And we don't advertise. Really, we feel that if we put enough into the experience, you'll go, you'll come back, and you'll, you'll say, you know what, that was a great trip, and you might tell somebody about it. How many of you that have traveled with us before have done that? Toward friends, neighbors, relatives? Yeah. So that's how it works. You actually do the advertising for us, because we see the millions of dollars that the cruise lines spend on advertising. We know where the money comes from, right? What do you get for it? So we feel like, you know what, if we pack it with all kinds of goodies, then you'll come back happy and tell somebody about it. If you were to come up and visit our office in Connecticut, you'll see the name TAUC spelled out like an acronym. T is trust and A is always do the right thing. So that's how we, you know, we're all motivated to make sure that, you know, we're doing the best thing that we can to make our guests. And they do the same with us. It's always, it's a good thing. We have a, at the end of every tout trip, like you all know, that have traveled with us, you're going to get a, a comment card. And there is one line in there that says, based on this experience, would you travel with us again? 
So after 2019, we tallied all those numbers. Every year we do this. And 20, after 2019, the average um, answer of absolutely was 96.7% of our guests said absolutely they would travel with us again. A very high net promoter score. I bet you know what that is. No? Anybody? What is it? It's basis. Would you recommend? Right. It's a recommendation on the internet. It's really organic. <clears throat> Ours is actually higher than Google, Apple, and Amazon, each one of those. So it's a good place to be. We're, we're happy with our reputation. So we have five different ways to travel. I'll talk about four of those. We don't have any events coming up for ni next year, but who knows, in 23 we probably will. So our Tout Cruising incorporates our river boats as well as several different small ship cruise itineraries. And why would you travel with Tauk instead of with one of those riverboat companies that do specifically riverboats or one of those small ship companies and book directly with them? So I'll, I think I'll touch on all, all of those things. But think about this. We've been a destination-oriented operator since 1925. We have a lot of experience in those destinations. For us, it's always about how are you going to see the destination in the best way that we can possibly show you? And we have those relationships all around the globe because we've been building those for decades. There's a tour director or sometimes two or three on the um, vessels on every single itinerary. And basically, you book it and you paid for it. We're not selling you things along the way. So it's always about the destination. Has anybody done the Iceland trip? Did you like that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And river cruises, we have nine Tauk river boats. And I think it's a hard thing for any one of you to figure out why you would go with us instead of one of those river boat companies. Because basically, we all go to the same ports. Our vessels are all the same size. They can only be so big to fit through the locks and hopefully under the bridges. <laughs> we all say we're all inclusive, right? So it's it, it's. It's hard, and I know, um, I think everybody here has been on a Taupe River cruise, almost, uh, as far as Wallace Pearson goes. Oh. Lynn Ann has, and you have to get on one. Deb has, I know Angela has. Yeah, so, um, so we cover the European waterways. We also have the Douro, which is new for, well, it was supposed to be last year, but not for this year. Brand spanking new, and several different configurations. So we do the Danube, the Rhine, the Moselle, we do the Rhone and the Seine and lots of different itineraries. So here's a little bit of a, how we do things. We have four of our long vessels where there's a company out there, Rhymes with Hiking, I, you might have heard of it. <laughs> they have 190 people on their long ships. We have a max of 130. So when I think about that, I'm on a Tauk River cruise I can go and sit in the lounge when it's a port briefing, and I don't have an issue trying to find a seat. I think about the restaurant, and I think, you know, it's open seating on top. But on those, I've been on a couple uh, competitors for a boat, not as a spy, <laughs> on vacation. But um, I remember the first couple nights, I saw people from the restaurant standing in the stairwell all the way up to the reception area, waiting for the doors to open. I didn't know what they were doing. They were waiting for the doors to open because they had to run in and try to snag that table for four or that table for six. With us, there's lots of seating. Um, Angela and I were on a river cruise in France and um, I remember we were hanging out in the bar area and um, we had like eight or nine people with us. And I went down to the maitre d', I said, you know, it was like 10 past eight. I said, we have nine people, do you think you can we can sit together. He said, give me 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, we went down to the restaurant. Easy. Voila. A table for nine. So it's easy for us um, to do that. We also have four vessels that are a little bit smaller because the rivers dictate what size vessel we can have in those areas with the locks. And then our brand new vessel, which I'll show you some pictures on the Doro, is even smaller than that. So we have more suites, which means we have more space per person. On our long vessels, we have 32 300 square foot suites, uh, 22. On our um, mid vessels, we have 20 or 14 300 square foot suites, and we have 12 on the smaller vessel. Um, all of our vessels are either 
five years old or a refurbished five years or less ago. So we have a very young fleet. And our, like I said, we have fewer people, more space per person. Why do I tell you why we have so many suites? It's because we have more space per person. We were actually social distancing before it was a thing. <laughs> so this is a nice um, thing to look at. The number of cabins that are 225 square feet or larger, the percentage, most of the cabins are 225 square feet or larger. And then um, we have no single supplement ever in category one. So say you guys want to travel and then you have a sister that wants to go too. She can go, she's not gonna be penalized. Or you guys love to travel together, but one of you snores and wants to stay married, so you can have your own cabins and not have to pay an additional supplement. That's on any ship, on any sailing. So we have lots of different itineraries, including six that are focused on families. We'll talk about Bridges, our family programs at the end. Uh, but with every Talc River Cruise, you have a team of four, a cruise director and three tour directors. So when you get off of the vessel, you go ashore. We also have local guides breaking the groups into smaller groups. And the tour directors are teaching you about the destination. They're with you from day one to the very last day. They're not selling you anything. They're all taking care of whatever you need and teaching you about the destination. Our real focus though is the land portion. We're not gonna just put you on the boat and say, okay, go, you know, and you come back and we don't even know what it is that you've done. We're focused, we build every excursion. So we're taking you to Lovekowitz Palace, which is a beautiful palace that we take you to after hours, where we bring in caterers and performers and it's just us inside. Chateau Bizy in France, we have dinner in a chateau after hours, and you get to meet a descendant of Napoleon um, who owns it now. On our bridges programs, we have a, well, we have the Palace, Palais Pallavicini in Vienna. We also have it for our bridges programs, and the kids wonder why we're eating ice cream first, the sorbet course. <laughs> and we have a lot of meals ashore. So we'll take you to a restaurant like Fouquet's on the Champs Elysees or Paul Bocuse's restaurant in Lyon. So you get a special taste of what the, um, the onshore experience is like. Lots of choices of excursions. You might have a cultural one, you might have a walking tour, you might have a culinary one, you might have a kayak ride, you might have a hike, you might have a bike trip, which they're always included. As well as when you land at the airport and you're going on the Talk River Cruise, basically leave your wallet in your pocket, in your purse, wherever, and don't pick it up until you get back to the airport because every gratuity, all your beverages, and they're not, it's not the icky wine. It's yeah. Chateau Neuf de Pop down in the, the south of Provence. It's, it's good stuff. Port charges, taxes, transfers, of course, all the excursions always included. Your tour directors are not selling you anything on a river cruise or any tub journey. I actually was a tour director for about a decade. I didn't do any of the river cruises, but I never sold anything to one of our guests. The sightseeing is always included. So I say, you go see our friends at Wallace Pearson, you take the bandaid off fast, you're done. <laughs> no, we're not gonna say anything to get there. <laughs> the hotels that we choose are always the best located and the best quality in the location. So we use a lot of great hotels. We use the Grand in Paris, right there, right next to the Opera House. We use the Four Seasons in Budapest and uh, we use so many great hotels that you know sometimes the hotels are a destination unto themselves I'm sure you know the trips that you've been on some of you you can remember you know one hotel that was more exquisite than the last so our vessels um, this is what they look like they always have the talc compass and they're just talc on board um, if you look at this you see this looks very different if you look up close you see these four that are um, extended windows or balconies, interior balconies. Those are our loft cabins, and I'll show you a picture of those in just a minute. So they're nicely appointed, but we're really not so focused on the appointments like we are. I mean, they're going on a talk river cruise is like staying in a talk hotel. You have everything you need right there, absolutely everything. Service, food, you know, everything that you need. And um, this is our alternative restaurant, so it's called Athis. 
Okay. Arthur's. <laughs> on the smaller vessels, this is what Arthur's looks like, and on the longer vessels, this is what Arthur's looks like. It's just a nice place to go. You can have breakfast, lunch, dinner, late, early. You can go in the middle of the day. Um, category six, we have seven categories of cabins. That's what it looks like. I know there's a river cruise line out there that says, we're the only river cruise line that has the beds that face the windows. <laughs> and uh, then the category three. This was the long windows that I showed you on the outside. We've got eight of those on the long ships. So what it is, it's a bottom deck cabin, but you don't feel like you're in an interior cabin, like you might be on a cruise ship. Because oftentimes, if you're in the bottom, on the bottom deck, and the vessel pulls up to the seawall, sometimes that's what you see and it feels dark inside, or sometimes another vessel will come up, we call it rafting, right next to you, and that's what you see. With this, there's this little interior balcony, and this window goes all the way up into the next deck. So you can sit there, have all the light come in, and there's a button that you press where the window opens. It's 225 square feet, it's a nice cabin. In fact, the president's at top, when she goes on the, a, a riverboat, when she goes with her family, that's where she likes to stay. Not a suite, she likes to stay there. When you travel with us on the Danube, we're gonna take you to Strapoff Monastery. And our competitors, that's where they are, that's how they're gonna see it. Us, we're inside. <laughs> this is a Chateau in France, I took this picture. I just felt so privileged to be there because nobody else goes here, and it's so picturesque. We go in and we get taken around by a count, and he's not wearing funny pants, but I thought he would be. And he tells us stories and shows us the pictures of all his dead relatives, and then we do a wine tasting, and you're just in the most picturesque place, and it just feels so nice to be there. You're in a nice small group of maybe 25 people, and it's just a happy place. This is what the luxury riverboat companies do when they take you to go see Monet's Gardens. And this is how Tauki takes you to see Monet's Gardens. So we go before it opens. And we get there and you're getting pictures of the gardens and how Monet saw them instead of all the guests in the gardens. And this is how the other companies go to the Louvre. And this is how we take you to the Louvre. My picture of the Mona Lisa looks like <laughs> well, when I was a tour guide in France, most of the time we did it, you know, and it was the other way because we didn't have this relationship yet. But and it's it's I'm going to say 95 percent of the time we have the appointment for after hours. You, you can find out when you book if we have that appointment, because sometimes like the King of Jordan might be coming, you know, and they close it off. Sometimes there's circumstances where we can't get it. But a lot of times, I mean, most of the time we have it. So these are our most popular river cruise itineraries, and the Doro certainly is because it's brand new. Um, we have more space on the Amsterdam to Budapest for next year. A lot of these are pretty much sold out. And I'm gonna talk to you about what's also new for 2022. Who's heard of the floor yet? Right, okay. Yeah, you're on. <coughs> The Floriad happens only once a decade, okay? It's a horticultural festival, and it's, this one is outside of Amsterdam in a town called Almir, and it happens the length of the season from May until October, and this is, or April till October, and this is 148 acres of reclaimed land from the sea that's based on growing a sustainable village. So the entire thing, to me, remember the Jetsons? Am I dating myself? <laughs> the Jetsons, this is what it seems like to me because everything is either solar powered, battery operated, wind operated, there's fossil fuels in this town. And to me, it's like, it's a city of the future and it will be um, an urban development of the future. So what would you see? On every itinerary that's on the Rhine, we're gonna take you to the Floriade. So you're gonna see like bridge, bridges that are made out of plants. See that? It's pretty cool. Um, you're gonna see this urban district where they'll take you back and forth on this lake and they'll take you on a wind powered vehicle. This horticultural expo, there are 40 different countries that donated trees and they're all in alphabetical order. 
and it's they're just going to teach you about the sustainable food and growing food and energy and and all of these things so to me it sounds pretty cool and um, there's entertainment there's all kinds of food there's i i just think it's a great way to spend a day and and I hope I get to go because I don't want to wait 10 more years. Yeah. <laughs> but we could be living like that you know, in, in 10, 20 years. Who knows? We could be. So to me, it's very interesting. On um, the Dutch waterways, we'd be, we would be going to the Floriade as well as Amsterdam to Budapest. There's five different itineraries on the Rhine where we would go on the Floriade. We would include that. So a new itinerary. These are two new itineraries for us where you'd fly into Munich on the heart of the Danube, and we'd fly out of Budapest. These are shorter itineraries. They don't include land on each um, end. Some of our itineraries, we do like two nights in Prague and two nights in Budapest on our Blue Danube trip. These are just land, If you water I mean. If you just have a week, these are quick, easy, and you get to see a lot in a week. Every day you're off the vessel, and every day, You'll have a choice of, do you want to go for a hike? Do you want to go for a bike ride? Do you want to go wine tasting? You know, you'll have lots of different choices always included in the price. Oh, yeah, you remember that, huh? <laughs> this is another really, really comprehensive itinerary because it takes you on the Rhine, the main river, and the Danube. So you see some of those really iconic cities from Amsterdam all the way to Budapest. Now you might think, I'm not even interested in a river cruise. Is there anybody not interested in a river cruise? No? Okay, good. I don't have to explain to you. But these were the major transportation routes in Europe. So because they were so important to bring goods all around Europe, the great cities, big cities are right along the riverbanks. You have Vienna, you have Amsterdam, you have uh, Bratislava, Budapest, right there. You don't have to go far. You walk off the vessel and you're right there in the hearts of these cities. And some charming places like Passau, um, Rudersheim. Oh, I love Rudersheim, especially in Christmas markets. It's just so quaint and, and charming and pretty. Oh, speaking of Christmas market, has anybody done a Christmas market to River Cruise? Did you like it? A few years ago, my boss said, Jennifer, I want you to go on a Christmas markets cruise. And I said, oh, I live in Florida. I can shop at home, and I don't want to freeze to death. And he sent me, and I thought, oh, I'm going to hate this thing. You know, why am I going? But now I want to go on another one. Why? Because it was magical. You have the spirit of Christmas, the Europeans, the artisans, the craftsmen, they're all doing their crafts, making you feel like you are in a storybook. Most of the homes and the buildings are all decorated. And you have these markets where you're hearing the music, you're having hot chocolate or glue vine. If you get cold, you could, did you have any glue vine? Yeah, <laughs> right? You can pop into a shop or something if you get cold. It wasn't, to me, the cold didn't matter because the experience was great. This is the um, little chapel where Silent Night was written. So we visit that on one of our trips. But I took these pictures. Look at these homes just decorated like crazy. And fireworks in some of the towns, you know, beautiful lights all over the place, just so festive that I felt sad that we don't have anything like that here. What's Christmas like here? It's like, okay, you gotta go shopping and fight the traffic and the mall and, you know, all that craziness that, you know, it's not about that. It's about the spirit and everybody has that in Europe. And I just think, you know, we lack that here. Um, yeah, just really nice. Our brand new riverboat on the Douro, we have three different itineraries. We have one that's focused on families. Then we have one where we do two nights in Lisbon and two nights in Madrid before and after the cruise. And the other trip is just cruise only and it's round trip from Porto. So I wanted to show you what a vessel looks like inside so you have some idea. Um, this is the newest vessel that we have. So that's roughly a tug style. Yeah. <laughs> All right, small ships. So I did one of our, as a tour director, I, I ran actually two itineraries on our small ships. And 
I, there's, you need to go on land for a lot of places, and there's some places where really the best way to get to is by, by ship. Um, so a lot of times I'll do these travel shows, and people will come up to me saying, we want to go to Italy, we want to go on a cruise, and I think, I don't want to bur burst their bubble, but when you're in Italy, you are an hour and a half away from Florence, from the Port of Livorno. You are an hour and a half away from Rome, from the Port of Civita Vecchia. You know, if you go to, if you go on a land tour and you spend three nights in Rome and you spend two or three nights in Florence, you have that time. And it's not the same menu that you're eating that they had in the Caribbean, you know, a few months before they crossed the Atlantic. You're eating authentic cuisine. Chianti and you're in the month of Pucciano and you know and you're talking with the locals and you have more time. I was a shore excursion manager on small cruise ships before I worked for Tauk. Yeah I'm really old. But <laughs> on the excursion you know I would say okay after the guided tour okay everybody has 45 minutes. That's the free time that you have in case you wanted to see something special in one of these you know places that you may have never been to before. So I strongly encourage land for some itineraries and small ships for other itineraries. Mm -hmm. These are the partners that we use. Metropolitan we use in the Galapagos, and we have several itineraries. Um, one that does a week in Peru, even staying at the Belmond at the top of Machu Picchu. So it, when you get up in the morning and you wanna go see the site and nobody's there, you know, it's really special to be able to do that because the train comes up later in the day and goes back later in the day. Silver Sea we use in Alaska and also in the Galapagos. And then Windstar we use on our Aegean trip, um, which is fabulous. Um, 148 passenger sailing vessel, which has a swim platform. And you can jump off the back and go for a swim, you know, off the um, coast of Santorini and just marvel at how beautiful it is. And also another one um, in, the, in the Mediterranean as well. Ponant we use for a number of itineraries. Most of the vessels we use are a max of 180 guests. So if you think about that, you think, you know, it's not too big, it's not too crowded, it's very manageable. Some of the vessels we charter and some we just put a tout group on. Um, and it depends on the itinerary. Uh, Antarctica, Angie's done Antarctica. I know you guys are going, you know, lucky you. <laughs> Antarctica, the government caps how many people can go ashore at any one time. So if anybody here is ever interested in Antarctica, think about going on a small ship. It doesn't have to be with us, but just think about going on a small ship so you get ashore and you're with the penguins and you're seeing, you know, seeing it firsthand. We do about 40, 14 zodiac landings during the course of our trip. So we cap the number of people off so we can have two groups, one group that will listen to the naturalists and the other group that will go ashore and then we switch. Vessels like the, those big ships with thousands of people, they do a drive-by. It's sad because they go all that way and they don't really get to see, you know, they don't get to experience it that way as well. We do Iceland as well, round trip from Reykjavik. Um, we do Venice, where we spend two nights in Venice, and we do the coastline of Croatia, which is stunning, and um, the Japan itinerary, two nights in Kyoto and two nights in um, Tokyo before and after. I've done that itinerary as well. So why would you, why would you do us instead of with the cruise line itself? Because they're all talc excursions. When we're going to see Ephesus, it's a terrible picture, but this is dinner you know, off of the Kelsus Library, which is really something else. We have a private sumo wrestling championship <laughs> experience. I took that picture. There's more pictures. I, I try to spare you some of the more <laughs> vivid details. <laughs> we, go, we have a special drumming. They do this to relieve stress, a special drumming experience. The people were amazing. They came out. These people are in these tiny little towns. They know there's a ship coming in. You know, sometimes they were carrying the French flag because they knew it was a French ship and the American flag. They were just so kind. We went to a private school. We had a geisha performance for us. We went to this um, market where they made food and, and they made this special thing. It was like a pancake kind of thing for us. I mean, it was really a wonderful trip and a way to see places where 
you know, it's not easy to get to and to cover that much distance in that amount of time. Of course, going to Antarctica, <laughs> Galapagos, <laughs> yoga with the sea lions. <laughs> This is one of my favorite itineraries. Starts either in Malta or Marseille. So we'd spend two nights in Malta and then two nights in Marseille before and after. And we spend time in Sicily. Um, we go to Syracuse, uh, Catania, Tarmina, um, just very special places. Go through the Straits of Messina. Where we're actually following along the path of Odysseus, you know, the Odyssey. And um, you'll hear the stories. Um, Sardinia, uh, one of my favorite places is Bonifacio, which is the very tip of Corsica. Beautiful limestone fjords with this fort and all of these homes right on the top of it. It's just very special and beautiful. We go to Elba, we go to um, the home that Napoleon lived in. Then we go to Nice, we go to Aix-en-Provence, and a couple nights in Marseille. It's a really um, great itinerary just to see those islands. You know, It's not easy to get to unless you have your own private yacht. And Alaska, if anybody's interested in doing the inside passage, we do a night in Vancouver and a night in Anchorage, I believe, before and after on a Silver Seas vessel. So this is the biggest vessel that we use. I believe she's 690 guests. But like I said, most of the vessels that we use are 180 guests or um, in the Galapagos, even smaller. And then brand new for next year a very um, different itinerary. So we spend um, we spend a night in Muscat, two nights in Dubai, and it goes to all these places that are, you know, foreign to most of us. This is what the vessels look like. They're very trendy, very well appointed. They have everything that you need. And I think you'd like it. Silver Origin in the Galapagos. Now, for those of you that are interested in land, we've got land journeys all over North America, Europe, our exotic itineraries. Um, what we like to do, and a lot of people will say, you're a luxury product. <clears throat> well, we don't feel like we're a luxury product. Why do we say that? Because we stay at national park hotels. <laughs> they're not luxury products. <laughs> they're not the Four Seasons in Kyoto. Um, they're not the Rosewood in Hong Kong. But when you wake up in the morning and you can see the sunrise, there's nothing like it. So that's why, you know, we could stay at better a five-star hotel like an hour away, but how much time would you have in the park? So we feel that this is the most important thing. On our Canyonland store, we do this. On the Canyonland store, um, we work with Ken Burns, the filmmaker, who spent 10 years producing the America's Best Idea video on the national parks. And he was in the parks all seasons of the year, different weather, different times of the day. So he is a wealth of knowledge. And he had created so many great relationships that we had been introduced to. So now we have um, that access and we have um, great itineraries that we've been working on with him. And um, he said, you know, the best way to see Capitol Reef National Park, you can't imagine how special it is unless you see it from above to get the best perspective. So we fly over Capitol Reef National Park. He said also, he said, you know, Lake Powell, you gotta go on the water. So we have a float trip on Lake Powell. So we, these are the kinds of things that we do. Jennifer, I wanna also mention, you know, the devil's in the details. And when we did a park trip with you all, and you know, the park that doesn't have air conditioning, so when we got there, there were already fans in our rooms because they knew we were all going to call for fans. And there's only so many fans at the hotel. So the talc people got the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Very important detail. <laughs> yeah, our partners know what to anticipate. The Fairmont people, they know what to anticipate. The Fairmont people have um, an acronym, TCF, talc comes first. Wow. Yeah, because we, we're their biggest partner you know, globally, so they take care of us. So this is a picture of a city in Canada. And okay, dating myself again, did anybody ever watch uh, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno? And remember his jaywalking? Oh, yeah. okay. So I love that, it made me laugh all the time. But I remember he went out and he saw Hollywood, he was asking people, it's the capital of Canada, you know? He probably asked 10 people and nobody could say what the capital of Canada was. 
So this is Ottawa. Canadian capital is one of my favorite itineraries. Why? Because we go to those great cities. Two nights in Ottawa at the Chateau Laurier. It's a fabulous hotel. It's right next to Parliament. Um, two nights in Toronto at the Fairmont. Two nights in Quebec City at the Chateau Frontenac. And two becks in Montreal. Uh, two nights in Montreal. Niagara Falls. Um, we go to Niagara Falls. We do, we eat our way through old Montreal. We visit the Basilica right here where Celine Dion got married. Do you know what the local guides carry so you follow them? It's not a flag. It's a hockey stick. <laughs> yeah, the, e the trip starts out either at an after hours evening at the Royal Ontario Museum, so you can see those great works of art up front, or at the Hockey Hall of Fame with all those Stanley Cups. So if you're a hockey lover, it's, it's pretty cool. You go through the Thousand Islands. It's a really great trip. If you haven't been there and you want to see those cities, no logistics. We take care of everything. You never have to touch your luggage. Most of the time on our land trips, you can have dinner anytime you'd like to, order what you'd like to, sit with you, the two of you, or join others. It's up to you. Lots of choices. So you don't feel like you're stuck with a group and it's cookie cutter and you're not having a good time. This is an itinerary that is only, probably only going to be around for next year. Why? Because it's focused on another event that only happens once every 10 years. And I really feel so old when I'm talking about this because it's the fourth time I'm talking about this. And I think it's four, I haven't been with Tal 40 years, no. But Oberammergau, has anybody heard of the Passion Play? It happens only once every 10 years. Of course, they didn't do it in 2020. So I, I, that was my third time, and now I'm talking about it again because it's next year for sure. And we have the best seats right up front for Oberammergau. If anybody's interested, we have a tiny little bit of space on that itinerary, um, Bavarian uh, Alps. Um, so that's a nice one. Venice, Florence, Rome, another week-long itinerary. We have many trips in Italy, and that classic Italy is definitely a classic. It's the best-selling trip. It's hard to get space on. Uh, this is another great one, and something else that we've done. We're going to the Uffizi Gallery after hours. We have, um, and of course, we go to the Vatican. So that's one of our guests in the Vatican in the Sistine Chapel. So it changes your experience a bit when you get to do that. When we go to the National Archives, we go before it opens. When we go to the George O'Keefe Museum, we go before it opens. We go to the Hermitage, we get in before it opens. So we want our guests not to have to spend their time waiting in line and to see it in, a, in the way that if we can offer it, we will. Yeah. Who's been on safari? Was it the best, best place? Best destination ever, Africa. Yes. To me, there's no place like Africa. No place like Africa. We've got seven safari programs. If anybody's interested, we've got some really great trips. And you could go with a safari outfit, or sure. What? We're very interested. Oh, okay. We can talk <laughs> afterwards uh, if you'd like to, but there's no place like Africa. You know, the animals, no two days are the same. You have everywhere it seems like you look it's exotic it's beautiful you have acacia trees and uh, baobab trees and you have stars that you feel like you can pluck them out of the sky because you're not close to light and the animals are just doing their own thing and they're so amazing and you see so many different ones things that you didn't even know exist you know you might come home and still remember that dung beetle this tiny yeah. little beetle <laughs> he's fascinating he's pushing this dung you know and it's the most important thing to him you know um, it's, you go there and you think, wow, it's so amazing that you think about it forever, afterwards, over and over and over. And the people, the people that you meet, they're happy. They're happy, happy people. You know, they're as interested in us as we are in them, maybe even more interested in us. And they're just, I don't know, it's heartwarming. It's a place where I feel like you have every sense that you're going to experience and you're going to come home and feel like you're so alive because you were able to do that experience and go to Africa. Um, for anybody that hasn't been um, envious because you have no idea what a treat you have to go to Africa. Uh, Kenya, Tanzania, we have, we go into the Angora Gora Crater, which I've traveled a lot and it's one of my top most beautiful spots ever in my life. Um, 
they bring out this, we thought we were going, we we're passing all these picnic tables and all these other safari companies are having their little box lunch. And we come upon this, a chef who's cooking us a barbecue, you know, and we had linen in China and yes, our own porta potty. <laughs> it's very special, very, very special. <laughs> the guys can go back and check the tires every now and then. You know, it's easier for them than it is for us. <laughs> and then also we've got some space on our elegant safari, South Africa. Um, Deb did this. She can tell you all about it. But this is more, this is four days of game driving. So it's a bit of safari, but it's also the country of South Africa. Magnificent scenery in Cape Town and also a lot of history, of course. In Kruger National Park, we stay in the best hotels. Right here, um, yes, this is roughing it, Tauk style, right? And you have your own private plunge pool on your balcony. But if you go in that plunge pool, you can be watching the elephants or the zebras that are just right off of the balcony. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of highlights on this. We go up to Victoria Falls. There's so many cool things that you get to do. and. Um, Africa, I don't know. For me, it's I couldn't do it just once. I've done two different itineraries. I want to do them all because it just grabs, you know, just something else. We also have family programs called Bridges. It's all about bridging the three generations. And these are built from the ground up. Angela and her family have done two. Um, it's focused on the kids having a good time, but us exploring with the kids. Uh, we have a London and Paris one where in London, we take bikes through the Royal Parks. We do a spy walk through London and we talk about British spies, famous British spies. We have a private capsule in the London Eye so we can all you know, go and look above London. Instead of just talking about the Thames and the kids learning, you know, maybe they get bored, we do a speedboat adventure on the Thames. We have a double-decker bus that's just for us so we can all be outside and enjoy the city and its beautiful weather. And drink it in the channel and go over to Paris. When we get to Paris, um, you know, a lot of times we have different things. But this one, when in Paris, we met somebody named Bert. Bert was a, um, he could read people's minds. And he'd ask somebody, okay, say, think of somebody's name. And you'd think of it. And he'd get it like that. He asked this one woman, he said, okay. Think of the last book that you read. Think of a page on the book. Think of a word on that page. And she said, okay, all right, I got it. She wrote it down. And then he said, and this guy's French, okay? English is not his first language. Ferret. He knew it. I mean, he blew us away. He blew our minds away as much as the kids. And um, on our Blue Danube River cruise, for example, we have two brothers <coughs> blindfolded that do the Rubik's Cube in like a few minutes. Yeah. So. We're having fun, the kids are having fun. We go through the Louvre, we do a scavenger hunt. Instead of the kids going through and you know, this is the Mona Lisa, like, you know, they don't really care, they're waiting for the gift shop. But they're having fun, they're competitive by then, they know each other and they're hanging out and they're having such a good time. So if you have the opportunity, if you have kids in your lives, you don't wanna take care of any logistics, we'll do everything for you. If you can do it, I think it's one of the best things you can do, one of the best way to spend your time because you're relaxing, enjoying being with the kids and not having to worry about, you know, taking care of things. So I want to thank you all very, very much. Those of you that travel with us probably know that we never discount. We're never going to get some kind of big, you know, deal. But we'll offer you a complimentary night, which will be the first hotel or the last hotel. It always comes with a transfer and breakfast. So questions? Yeah. Do you have any trips kind of on your radar but you haven't finalized yet? Um, they haven't gone through all your criteria yet, but are there places that you're looking at fairly seriously going to that you have not gone to yet? New itineraries? Mm -hmm. Huh, that's a good question. Um, that, you know, Dubai cruise, that's brand, brand new. Um, I bet you'll be looking into Ulala. Maybe, maybe. I know, um, who was it? I know Robin Talk was in Saudi Arabia recently. It doesn't yeah. mean we're going to have a program, but it might. 
Okay. Um, Anything to Easter Island? Not that I know of. No, and cruises, and cruises, we have to find the right partner. You know, that's the problem. If we, if they do it once, it's not great for us. We want to do it repeatedly. We want to, you know, develop relationships and, and do things consistently. Like when I was a tour director, I would usually do six rotations of every itinerary. So, you know, I'd go back and I'd, I'd know the people in the restaurants and the hotels and I'd, I, you know, you learn more every time you go, but you know the, the information so well. So well, Easter Island would always have to be part of a land something where you fly over for a few days because the getting there by ship can just be way it's real too empty. Busy. Yeah. Well, I, I I can tell you that we um, developed a small ship cruise in Greece for families, um, but it never got out, got launched because of COVID. So that was one new itinerary. Um, as far as other ones, I don't know, but um, who's your travel consultant here? Lynn. Oh, Lynn. Okay. You know what, Lynn? I'm going to find out if there's anything on the docket and I'll let you know. Okay. You're welcome. He, he also was mentioning about, you know, you all did <coughs> for a while and then didn't and then did again and then it doesn't seem like you were with the bugaboos. Yeah. What, what, is there any chance of that coming back? Yeah, I'm sure it will come back. I don't know when, but um, that's the Canadian Rockies. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's the Canadian Rockies, <coughs> and you stay in these lodges, and you, you guys did it twice. Lodges that are in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but it's a really beautiful, the most incredible scenery you can imagine. Any other questions? Just What's the soonest one we can book? Christmas <laughs> <laughs> markets. Um, there's more wine, drink like your relatives, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.